We're standing here in one of the studios at Aircom in Paris. I'm Barry Verko from the MIT Experimental Music Studio. This to my right is Larry Beauregard, the flutist from the Boulez Ensemble Ante Contemporain. The problem we're dealing with is that of relating live performers to computer processed sound. To introduce the computer as a synthetic performer accompanying a live instrument. The first example we'll give you is that of a Handel flute sonata uh, with the computer playing the harpsichord accompaniment. For the computer to act as a synthetic performer in the context of other live performers, it must l learn to listen to what the others are playing. This is brought about by connecting the flute in this case to the computer physically, a job that has been accomplished by Larry himself. One of the fundamental problems of uh, simple audio pitch detection is that the computer quite simply cannot react quickly enough to pitch changes. So in order to help the computer along, I first of all installed uh, a series of optical switches on each of the keys of the instrument, it's a normal transverse flute otherwise, and uh, this allows the computer to have um, an initial guess of what note I'm actually playing. Filtering operations and a subsequent de-glitch allow accurate pitch to um, be obtained by the computer in 30 milliseconds, which is far faster than a normal audio-only pitch detection operation would go. For example, the computer would be able to completely track the following sequence of notes, which an audio-only pitch detector would not be capable of doing. Once the computer can track and follow pitches, it's then faced with two musical problems. One, extracting musical information from the other performers, and two, deciding how to perform its own part. First of all, the extraction of music information has as its largest problem the following of changes of tempo on the part of other performers. We'll play the same piece now with extreme changes of tempo in which the computer is asked to track what's happening. As is the case with live performers, the synthetic performer here must be tolerant of gravest or grievous errors on the part of the other players. We'll now ask Larry to play rather sloppily as a beginning or rather um, careless performer might do, and um, we'll ask the computer to try to understand still what is happening. The tolerant listener 
is usually able to follow what's happening by matching his idea of what should be happening with what he's hearing. What's happening in the computer here is very fast, on the fly, real time pattern matching. I suspected in the beginning that this was a very complex neural process, rather loosely connected only to that of the performance itself. In fact, I hypothesized that there are two complex neural processes, perception on the one hand, and synth synthetic or performance ideas on the other, and that these two communicate with one another at a rather low bandwidth, only about 10 times a second. On this assumption, I then proceeded to represent the two neural activities with programs running as control processes on the PDP-1155, which controls in turn the 4X sound processor. The hypothesis here was that 10 times a second was sufficient communication between these two relatively complex processes, and the experiment was to see whether this, in fact, was adequate for real performance. We'll give another example now of that in which you can bear in mind that the communication between listening and synthetic performance is at a very low rate. examples we've given here have been that of a single piece of Baroque music, but in experiments we've tried it appears that the same principles apply to music of all styles. The idea is to enable the synthetic performer to be an intelligent musical performer able to participate with other musicians uh, in any kinds of concerts. Now, I would ask perhaps the performer here whether he believes that this is in fact uh, a possibility in the future for uh, legitimate stage performance. I don't think we'll ever replace the live performer, but I think the computer has capabilities that are certainly different uh, than those of the human performer and possibly complementary to those of the human performer. And I think that's where the interesting research now lies and as we push forward in these uh, simulations of human musical performance.